Hey YouTubers. A little vlog to talk about my day today. I went to um, a swap meet, a photo swap meet. And uh, I don't always go. It's a kind of a once a year thing. It may be twice a year. For some reason I only know about the one that's in May. Um, but uh, I've been a few times and I, I go, let's say, every other year. So this year, naturally, I'm, I'm all hopped up on large format stuff. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll find some interesting things there for large format photography. Maybe I'll find a lens. Who knows? Uh, but I know in, in the past I've been. And um, one year there was a Toyo 45 CF, uh, which I almost bought. I think they wanted 500 bucks for it. It seemed like a real deal. Um, I hoped to trip across something interesting this year. Uh, so I headed up there. Well, there wasn't all that much of interest, to be honest. Uh, I mean, there's tons of stuff. There's tons of interesting stuff. I should I should change that. Um, there was nothing that much that made me want to buy anything. Um, there were probably only like two large format lenses that were even interesting and would kind of duplicate uh, focal lengths that I already have in my small but growing collection. I made an offer on one. It was a total low ball. Uh, it was a 90 millimeter. I already have a 90 millimeter, uh, uh, but it was a, a smaller um, aperture, maximum aperture, so it was a smaller lens. Uh, but uh, like I said, I lowballed it. And <laughs> he didn't go for it. Um, there was a, a number of Leica SLRs there, one of which was an R7, which is the model right before my R8. Not a big surprise, but uh, the R7 sort of marked the last what I would say is sort of traditional style. This is an R3, but an R7 looks very much like this. Um, and then you have the R8. For those of the uh, for those of you who haven't seen all my videos on this camera, uh, so you can see there's a major stylistic change uh, between these cameras. So a uh, long way of saying, I toyed with getting the R7 because then I would have the first non-SL model of Leica. I would have the last uh, of what you, I guess, would call the um, traditional body, like the R3 through the R7. So I'd have the R3, the R7, and then I'd have the first of the modern style, which is the R8. Probably spent way too much time talking about that. I did consider buying that R7 just as a collector's thing. Didn't do it though. Uh, didn't want to spend the money on that. What else? Um, there was a really interesting camera, which I've never seen in the flesh. Uh, a Roloflex, I believe it's an SL2000, which is a 35 millimeter. It's like a little brick, uh, 35 millimeter camera that has uh, ground glass viewing, kind of like a Hasselblad, and also a viewfinder. Um, it is literally rectangular block shaped. Uh, uh, it's fairly electronic, if I recall correctly. Heavy, solid, feels like there's no air in it at all. It was really cool, but they wanted like 600 bucks for it. Uh, and I would, another thing that I would buy just because it's cool looking and be fun to kind of play with. And, I'm not going to spend $600 on something like that. Uh, what else? There were some giant, really old school, large format lenses that uh, are still mysterious to me. And, and uh, they're, they're the ancient style lens that uh, just you got to do some work to get them onto your camera. So uh, kind of stayed away from those. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff, you know, there was lots of just, uh, you know, standard uh, old school 35 millimeter stuff. Not all that much. It was interesting. Uh, there was a Canon AT1, which I had never heard of. That is apparently the shutter priority model of the AE1, and they made very few of them according to the guy with the desk. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But I did buy something. I, I didn't buy a camera. I, I bought no camera gear, but I did make a purchase. I bought some prints. I never thought I would do this. Uh, I bought 11 prints. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm going to show a few of them. Uh, the guy that's fixing the shutter on my 90 millimeter top core, which I don't know if I've mentioned in a prior video. I guess I haven't. Actually, I have talked about it, haven't I? 
Never mind. Anyway, the guy that's fixing the shutter on my 90 millimeter uh, large format lens uh, had a table, and he had a lot of interesting stuff. Actually, he had the Canon AT1, uh, but he had boxes and boxes of these beautiful black and white wet prints or eight by tens from the 50s. I found myself really drawn into this. Um, they uh, they're all in the Grand Canyon, as far as I know. And I looked through them one whole time, like, ah, I don't need any prints, and, and walked around. There's probably, you know, 20, 20 tables at this thing. Um, came back around and looked at them again. I was like, how much are these? And uh, it turned out they were a couple bucks a piece if you bought, say, 10 of them. So I got 11. I'm going to show you a few, but uh, I think I can see what people are talking about when they talk about wet prints when I look at some of these. Um, it's not going to come across on this vlog. I realize that, but uh, there's no better way to show them at the moment. I guess I could document scan them and put them on Flickr, but then it's going to create noise because people go, oh, that's a great photo you took. And I have to explain, no, I didn't take it. I just scanned it, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just going to show them to you and hope that you can just deal with the fact that it's not even going to come across very well. So what we have here is an amazing landscape with this guy up here in the corner standing overlooking it. It's, it's really beautiful. The tones in this are amazing. It won't come across. If it looks good to you in um, the vlog on YouTube, just imagine what it looks like in person. The tones are incredible. The detail is amazing. You could get out a magnifying glass and just, there's basically arbitrary detail in this. It's as deep as you want to go. So I think uh, this was shot on 4x5. So it's a very small enlargement of 4 by It's a 2x enlargement of 4x5. Um, this is another one, probably my second favorite. This one won't come across as well on the video. Let's see if I can get it closer. Uh, this one, the tones are a bit more subtle. It's not quite as dramatic, but you can see this side is, is in shadow. But they've controlled the shadows so well that there's lots of detail in the shadows. And then you've got the river running through at the bottom. Uh, really nice photo. I, it's got to come across better in person than it does in the video. It almost looks like an HDR shot. So this person may have uh, overexposed and underdeveloped, underdeveloped to get the negative for this. This one's just a bit whimsical. I couldn't resist. Uh, it's a couple of women, uh, you know, they've arrived at their cabin in the Grand Canyon and they're getting ready to go on a hike or whatever. But uh, look at the tones in this thing. I don't know if it comes across. It's just... It's so crisp and beautiful. Now, the flash shadows are kind of annoying, but, oh my God, in person, it just looks so good. I just had to have it, so. I got weird taste sometimes. Uh, another nice shot with a lot of contrast. As I said, I, I think I said, these are all in Grand Canyon. Nice foreground and background contrast. I kind of feel like the, the point of interest there is probably too centered. But the main thing I love about it, and again, I hope it comes across in the video, but I don't know, is it's so layered. You've got the foreground silhouette, the distant foreground, then you've got the, the point of interest, and then you've got layers and layers of uh, uh, cliffs or ridges or whatever going into the background. It's um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven layers of depth in this image and uh, it looks really amazing in person. Sorry if I'm torturing you. It's another one with great contrast and sorry the menu bar on my Mac is showing up in in the in the video. Sorry about that I'm trying to control that. Uh, so obviously there's an overhanging cliff and there's actually shadow detail in that really deep shadow and uh, then in the distance, you've, you've got this rock formation. And I don't know if you see it. I'll, I'll try to get it closer. Uh, let me find the peeps. There are people 
standing there on that rock formation. Again, sorry about the, uh, the menu bar showing up in the image. Um, just a overall impressive image and it gives you the sense of scale with the people in there. I mean, you almost don't notice them at first and then when you see them you realize how big these rock formations are. So what I've done is, uh, if you haven't heard of these, this is how I keep my photos. This is uh, an Atoya, I think it is. I-T-O-Y-A. Um, it, it's basically a portfolio. And it's just, you know, one page per sheet. They make different sizes. This is eight and a half by 11. So I just, uh, I have one of these laying around that doesn't have my own images in it. And I'm just putting these in there. And I think there's a chance I might become a print collector. I don't know. Now this guy, uh, David, or Dave, uh, key camera service here in uh, Colorado, he sold me these working on my shutter. He says he's got 18,000 of these things. So I'm not going to go buy 18,000 of these prints, but just looking at these prints in person makes me want to see other ones. Uh, from this era especially you know an era of wet printing and, and so forth so I'm not going to take back everything I've said before about wet printing versus uh, uh, digital printing like uh, inkjet printing but these prints uh, have made me a believer in wet printing just because they're incredible they're really beautiful you could probably reproduce this with inkjet uh, but I haven't been able to, but my photos maybe aren't of sufficient quality to do this sort of thing. So uh, these kind of give me something to look at to go, wow, that's what you could do. Uh, it's a target or a goal for me to try to reach uh, in my printed output. And speaking of printed output, uh, I'll just throw in randomly here. If you're not printing your images, you're missing out because um, the screen is a pretty low resolution format or uh, medium and uh, print whether it's inkjet or you know uh, wet printing optical printing um, it's a lot higher resolution and I think you get possibly more out of it holding something in your hand and looking at it under good light um, one thing a monitor does do for you is you know it has that backlighting so it makes the image pop a bit but uh, these prints, uh, when I was holding them in good light uh, earlier today, they were popping. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. They're very, very nice. So enough about that. That was my day uh, going to the swap meet. A uh, little bit of news. I did get my Arca Swiss camera in. I'll show a couple of pictures of it. Uh, it's a 4x5. It's the, the cheapest camera in their line. It's called the F-Line Basic and it has base tilts uh, and um, you know it's, it's just kind of the bottom of their line but that's that's not saying much the, the, the cameras are really nice I'll do a video on it uh, once I um, have spent a little more time with it our weather has been really crappy I've not been able to get the camera out and shoot it and practice with it but I'll do a video with it um, just like I did with the Horseman 45A and uh, I think I'm just going to wrap it up right there. I, I know I've gone on and on a bit, so this video is going to get long for a lot of people. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later.